Janet Yellen, who's presently in India, is speaking. Let's listen in to what she's got to say. The lingering effects of the pandemic, spillovers from Putin's barbaric war in Ukraine, and macroeconomic tightening as many countries grapple with inflation. Emerging markets in developing countries are particularly under pressure. Tens of millions more people face extreme poverty and hunger since Russia's war in Ukraine began. Prime Minister Modi was correct when he said that this is not an era of war. I believe that ending Russia's war is a moral imperative, and it's also the single best thing we can do to help the global economy. This is a view that's broadly shared among policymakers of the world's major economies. But difficult times test us. But I believe the challenges we face are bringing the United States and India closer together than ever before. I'll begin my remarks today by discussing the strong relationship between our two countries. I'll focus particularly on efforts to deepen our shared economic interests, including through trade. Our collective work is critical to showing the world that democracies can deliver for our people. Then I'll turn to our leadership on global priorities. The trajectory of the global economy will be shaped by the work that India and the United States undertake together. The same is true for the prosperity and security of the Indo-Pacific. As a lead developing country and the world's largest economy, we have great opportunity and great responsibility to make progress on the world's most intractable problems. In fact, I think that our continued partnership is an example of how advanced and developing countries can bridge policy differences and move forward on major policy objectives. I'd like to start by reflecting on the strength of our relationship. The U.S.-India relationship continues to grow through its 75th year. Our ties are stronger than ever before. The United States is home to the largest Indian diaspora outside of Asia. It serves as India's largest export market. Bilateral trade between our two countries reached an all-time high last year, and we expect it to grow further in the years to come. The dynamism of our relationship can especially be seen in the technology sector. Our people and our companies depend on each other on a daily basis. Indians frequently use WhatsApp to communicate. Many American companies rely on Infosys to operate. Leaders of Indian descent populate the highest ranks of Google, Microsoft, and other valuable American companies. They're also responsible for starting a third of all immigrant-founded startups in the United States. Domestically, both of our countries are pursuing long-term investments in our economic strength. Since the Biden administration took office last year, we've enacted an agenda that I call modern supply-side economics. This agenda pursues investments in human capital, physical capital, and science and technology in order to boost the economy's productive capacity and reduce inequality. And I know that India shares an interest in certain elements of this agenda as well. Prime Minister Modi has launched a 100 trillion rupee infrastructure development plan, just as President Biden is deploying funding from our historic $1.2 trillion infrastructure law. Both of our countries are also growing our domestic semiconductor and clean energy industries. The United States welcomes India's ambition to become a powerhouse in the areas of green hydrogen and other renewable technologies like solar. More broadly, 
India and the United States are the world's largest democracies. We're living at a critical time for the cause of freedom around the world. Democracies require our constant attention and nurturing. It's important for all democracies to renew our commitment to civil liberties and human rights, including for all our minorities at home and abroad. And we must continue to cultivate the economic vitality that's tied to our democratic transition traditions. That's an open, inclusive, and competitive economy where new ideas can grow and thrive with the stability and reliability accorded by adherence to the rule of law. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.